Welcome back to Photo 101, your resource for all things photography. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for the latest content, and if you enjoy this video, hit that like button. Today, let's take a look at picturing the landscape in photography. Gracing the top five list of popular subjects in photography, the landscape holds a special place in the heart of any photographer. Whether it's a sweeping view on the latest road trip or an iconic spot in a national park, the camera has always made the perfect tool for capturing the natural world. All of that, it turns out, is for good reason. Landscapes, the most static of subjects, let us compose an image without the risk of things changing too quickly. In fact, some of the earliest photographs are landscape shots, because it allowed for that long exposure necessary. Photography has come a long way since then, yet the pull of the landscape keeps drawing artists in. So throw on that favorite pair of hiking shoes and get ready to discover three artists who each explored the landscape in their own creative way. In a time before photography, how would you know what distant lands looked like? You'd likely encounter images in the form of drawings, etchings, and paintings. However, we all know that those are subject to interpretation. Then, in steps photography. The early photographer Francis Frith put it perfectly when he stated that the camera produced an image far beyond anything that is in the power of the most accomplished artist to transfer to his canvas. With its stunning ability to capture details as they appear, travelers quickly took up the medium to document far-flung locations. For someone like Frith, the opportunity was twofold. It was a way to capture views of locations that many were familiar with, but could only ever dream of traveling to visit. The other motivation for him was to enter into a growing market of armchair travelers who, upon his return, were eager to purchase his books, postcards, and prints. His work not only records sites of cultural heritage and history throughout Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East, but also paved the way for future photographers to earn an income from their work and the images that they brought home. We've all been there before. On a trip to a stunning location, we reach for our camera and take a photo. Yet when we look back on the shot, it often just doesn't measure up to the beauty that we witnessed in person. While it may make some of us doubt our photo skills, the biggest reason is often due to a simple fact. Your camera is not an eye. Although we like to make the comparison, until recently, our eyes almost always outperformed even the best gear. This wasn't lost on a man that many of you may know, Ansel Adams. He intimately understood the gap between what we perceive in person and what the camera records. With this in mind, Adams advocated for the importance of the artist to intervene heavily in the darkroom stage. A perfect example is this image, Moonrise Hernandez. While driving through rural New Mexico with his son, he was struck by the iridescent clouds hovering over the distant mountain range with a small church in the foreground. Quickly, he realized that the camera would record either the sky or the landscape well, but not both. Splitting the difference, he made sure to expose for key details while leaving the rest to his printing process in the darkroom. Adams bucked the trend of straight photography and instead developed darkroom techniques and a zone system for printing that encouraged artists to get creative with how they print their negatives. Adams not only leaves a legacy as a master printer, but also championed photography's role as witness and advocate for the preservation of nature. It's a little ironic that landscapes, rich with depth, all too often end up as a flat, two-dimensional image. No matter how much we edit a shot, in the end there's only so much we can do to get that magic back from seeing a sight in person. In fact, we often go through a lot of trouble editing photographs of nature in order to achieve an ideal that doesn't actually exist in reality. These ideas are exactly what motivated the artist Millie Tibbs to get creative with her approach to the landscape. In the series Mountains and Valleys, Tibbs photographed picturesque locations throughout the American Southwest. Then, taking inspiration from paper arts like origami, she transforms a flat print by folding, cutting, and creasing it, following the shape and form of the natural features. She then re-photographs the altered print to create each final image. According to Tibbs, it's more than just decoration. Her process seeks to impress an aesthetic ideal onto the landscape, scarring the very thing they intend to embellish. To her, the series confronts the fantasy of an untouched and untouchable vista. In the end, her project invites us to consider how much of the perfect landscape is based in reality, and how much is what we bring to the act of picturing it with our camera. If you enjoy this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can check out all our resources on photography and more at mopa.org.